Are we here? Are we in it now? Is this the soft landing? Yeah, that was my I told you so uh, tweet, uh, Joe. I, I, you know, I just couldn't resist. Probably premature. You know, we, I think we need to wait until the Fed actually starts lowering interest rates to declare victory that we've soft landed. But it all feels pretty good to me. Uh, inflation's coming in uh, very gracefully as the supply shocks from the pandemic and the Russian war uh, go to the rearview mirror. And that's all happening without any significant hit to jobs and unemployment. So soft landing feels like a pretty likely scenario. Not quite there yet. Hmm. Things can happen. Uh, but I feel pretty confident uh, that that's what uh, the future holds. We are seeing some companies, though, Mark, lay individuals off. And some economists are pointing to unemployment figures that actually show we can be next year on the cusp of a recession. I know the unemployment rate's at 3.9 percent, but it looks like it's bound to potentially go past that 4 percent, which I know the White House loves to tout, remaining under 4 percent for 21 months going. Are there any concerns you have with the labor market right now? Well, Anne Murray, it is slowing. Uh, it, you know, uh, lots of different measures indicate that it's easing up, but that's that's by design, right? That's exactly what the Federal Reserve is trying to do: slow down the job market, cool things off, get wage growth back in, so that inflation gets back in the bottle. So this is exactly what you'd expect to happen: is going to script. Now, you know, it, I think it is natural that when you're in, you know seeing this slowdown. You begin to get nervous and worried, well, you know, is it just going to slow and soft land or is it going to slow and crash, which is a reasonable thing to be worried about. But, you know, all the fundamentals suggest that, you know, everything is kind of sticking the script here. It's coming in for the landing and it's going to stick it. Uh, mm -hmm. So I feel pretty good about it. There are, you know, there are some labor market indicators that are flashing a little bit of yellow here. You know, the continuing claims, you know, they're up a, a bit. But I, I, you know, I just caution putting too much weight on any one indicator. There's so many issues with regard to measurement, particularly with those continuing claims and seasonal adjustment. I mean, if you look at the plethora of the data, it just feels like you know everything is slowing exactly as uh, it should. It's it's uh, to script. It's uh, by design. You know, the script, of course, could change. Mark, we have no shortage of potential wild cards. In fact, we keep adding to them. A year ago, we were talking about. In inflation being uh, prompted by the war in Ukraine, one that could take a turn at any moment. We've added great turmoil in the Middle East. And while we've seen oil prices coming down recently, I wonder which one of these you've got your eyes on. Yeah, no, there's always risk, lots of risk. Uh, and, you know, the Israel Hamas war is, you know, is, uh, you know obviously very disconcerting. And if it uh, does spread to the rest of the region and disrupt uh, oil, particularly coming from Iran, that would be the most likely uh, place where we'd see the disruption. You know, that mm -hmm. would change the picture pretty quickly. You know, nothing is more pernicious than a run up in oil prices. And uh, fortunately, they've been moving south, not north. But uh, you can't con con certainly construct that uh, scenario. But, you know, Joe, let me again, just because it's Friday afternoon and Thanksgiving's dead ahead, and I do think we should You're be You're going to pull me in off the that. ledge. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Look, you know, if I had this interview with you, probably did four or five, six weeks ago, I'd say, hey, Joe, we've got a number of problems that we, we're going to have to uh, grapple with. We've got a UAW strike. We've got a potential government mm -hmm. shutdown. We've got high oil prices. We've got interest rates going skyward. We've got student loan borrowers that have got to start repaying. Well, OK, the UAW strike is over. There's no government shutdown. Oil prices are much lower than they were. Interest rates are back in. And I can't discern any major, fall, any significant fallout from the increase in student loan payments. So, yeah, there's Amazing. things to worry about. Always are. But it feels pretty good right now. Well, it feels pretty good. But Moody's last week downgraded its outlook. And I want you to take a listen to what Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen weighing in on that downgrade and her response, uh, given the state of the U.S. economy. Let me start with the Moody's decision. They maintained the U.S. AAA rating, but um, indicated that there's a negative outlook. This is a decision that I disagree with. The American economy is fundamentally strong, and Treasury securities remain the world's preeminent safe and liquid asset. OK, Mark, so I know you can't directly comment on what Moody said last week, which is downgrading the outlook for the U.S. But do you think that that downgrade put a bit more of a pressure on lawmakers to 
get through a continuing resolution and potentially for the rest of the year try to get the fiscal house in order? Well, they don't need a ratings action to get the you know uh, to need to light a fire here. It's pretty obvious that you know something's got to give, something's got to change. I know I am very optimistic about the near term, but the longer term we've got some issues, and our fiscal situation is clearly one of them. We've got to change it. I mean, if we don't change current law, tax policy, spending, uh, the trajectory here is very ominous. I mean, the Congressional Bu Budget Office, the nonpartisan group of folks that do this work. They, they, they forecast under reasonable assumptions about the economy, by the way, that uh, the debt to GDP ratio, which is the best measure of our indebtedness, is going to go from just south of 100 percent to 115 percent 10 years from now to 180 percent 30 years from now. That's when their forecast ends. But you can you know, you can do the trend lines. That's not sustainable. So lawmakers do need to get it together. And I don't think they need a rating agency to tell them that. That's pretty obvious. And the bond market is going to react. I mean, it, one reason why yields have risen, I mean, if you go back six months ago, the 10-year was firmly below 4%. Now it's firmly above 4%. And I think a good part of that is goes back to concerns of, um, among investors around, uh, you know, what, what's going to happen with our long-run fiscal situation. Lawmakers have to come back and figure this out.